Do you struggle with asking questions in English? In this video, I'm going to show you how to ask questions in every kind of way. I'll give you the formulas that you can use with plenty of examples. My name is Kay, your English teacher with I Speak Spoke Spoken. Now let's get started with the video. Don't forget to click here on the little I to download all of the slides. At the end, you can take a quiz and leave me a comment down below to let me know how you did. Let's start with yes and no questions. We form these questions when we want an answer, yes or no, but typically the answer includes a little more information. In the first example, do you enjoy hiking? You can simply answer yes or no, but in this example answer, we give a little more information. Yes, I love hiking. The formation for these kinds of questions is the auxiliary or modal verb, the subject, and the main verb. And you can see this information included in the answer as well. It's not so important that you memorize the formation structure, but it's very important that you memorize some examples. You can keep practicing these examples or change them a bit to make them true for you. In the next example, can she drive a manual? Again, we have the modal verb, the subject, and the main verb. Can she drive a manual car? You can simply answer yes or no, but there's a little extra information. No she can only drive an automatic. And again, we see the components from the question in the answer. We have the subject and we have the main verb as well. We have phonetic transcription here to help you with pronunciation. We have a stress on the first syllable in this word, manual, manual. Let's look at WH questions. WH questions begin with a word which is spelled with WH, for example, who, what, when, where, why, and we include how in this list. The first word in WH questions begin with a WH word. In the first example, what time does the meeting start? The meeting starts at 9 a.m. The answer gives the information that the WH question was seeking. In the next example, why did you choose this career? It follows the formation with the WH word, the auxiliary or modal verb, the subject, and the main verb. Remember that it's important to understand the formation for these questions, but focus on practicing with the examples. Why did you choose this career? I chose this career because I'm passionate about it. Again, giving information that the WH question is seeking. Now let's look at pronunciation. In red, we have the phonetic transcription to help you with proper English pronunciation. I hear my students make a mistake when they pronounce this word quite often. So say it with me, does, does. Sometimes people mispronounce this word by saying do's, does. And in this word, the CH sound makes the ch sound, choose, choose. And TH, stick your tongue between your teeth. This, this. Career has a stress on the second syllable. Career, career, career. Passionate has a stress on the first syllable. Passionate, passionate. And about has a stress on the second syllable, about, about. Now let's look at tag questions. These are very common in American English. And basically it is a statement with a little question at the end. The little question at the end is in the opposite polarity of the statement that came before it. In the first example, you've met John before. This is the statement plus a comma and the tag question, haven't you? Haven't you is in the opposite polarity because haven't is a contraction for have not. The answer is affirmative. Yes, I've met him at your party. In the next example, this is your book. Here is the statement with a comma, isn't it? Isn't it is the tag question. Again, this is in the opposite polarity because isn't is a contraction for is not. 
However, the answer is agreeing with the tag question. Actually, it's not mine. Number four, choice questions. Choice questions are similar to yes-no questions because the answer can be one of two things. For example, yes-no questions, the answer can be yes or no. And with choice questions, the answer can indicate the first choice or the second choice in the question. Let's look at the first example. Do you prefer coffee or tea in the morning? Coffee is the first choice, tea is the second choice. The answer chooses one of the choices. I prefer tea. In the next example, are you going to watch the movie or read the book? Watch the movie is the first choice, read the book is the second choice. And the answer indicates I'm planning to read the book first, choosing one of the choices given in the question. The formation for these kinds of questions is the auxiliary or modal verb, the subject, the verb, and the first choice followed by the second choice. It's quite a simple formula. Let's take a look at indirect questions. These are considered to be more polite questions, but they can be a bit tricky because they don't follow the typical formation of questions that we covered in the earlier parts of this video. Indirect questions typically start with phrases such as, could you tell me? Or, I was wondering if... For example, could you tell me where the post office is? It's not a direct question such as, can you tell me where the post office is, please? It's indirect, which some people consider to be more polite. An answer to this question could be, it's two blocks down on your right. Another example of an indirect question is, I was wondering if you could help me with this problem. It's not a direct question like, can you help me with this problem, please? It's considered to be more polite because it's indirect. An example answer for this kind of question is, sure, I'd be happy to help. The formation for these kinds of questions starts with the introductory phrase, could you tell me? And we have the question word, where? And the subject, which would be the post office. And at the end, we have the verb. Again, don't worry about memorizing the formation. Focus on using the examples. Subject questions ask for specific information. For example, who wrote 1984? The first word in this question, who, indicates that the answer should give this information. Who wrote 1984? George Orwell wrote 1984. And in the next example, what caused the power outage? So the answer should give the specific information to that question. A storm caused the power outage. And let's go back and look at pronunciation. 1984, we have a stress on the second syllable in 19. And 84, we have a stress on the last syllable. 84, 84. And in outage, we have a stress on the first syllable, outage, outage. And power, we have a stress on the first syllable, and this last R sound is a bit soft. Power, power. Now let's take a look at questions with prepositions. These are questions which give information about relationships or about specifics. In the first example, who are you going with? The question has the preposition at the end, so the answer needs to indicate the preposition with the information. I'm going with my sister. The formation that we use for these kinds of questions is the WH word, the subject, and the verb, plus of course, the preposition in the preposition question. In the next example, what are you looking for? Again, we have the WH word, the subject, the verb, and the preposition. The preposition appears again in the answer. I'm looking for my keys. And let's go back and check pronunciation, which we show you with the phonetic transcription. With has a TH, so don't forget to stick your tongue between your teeth. With. 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 
looking has a stress on the first syllable. Looking, looking, looking. And keys. Say it with me. Keys, keys, keys. Let's take a look at tense structures in questions. If we're using present tense, of course, we're using do or does. And for past, we use did. For example, do you like pizza? Yes, I like pizza. Because this indicates that we're in the present tense, the answer is also in the present tense. But in the next example, it's past tense. Did you like the movie? I see my students make this mistake quite often. They will add the past participle here, and that's incorrect. When you're asking a question in the past, did you like the movie? Make sure that you don't add a participle to this verb. In the answer, you will add the past participle because you can simply answer, yes, I liked the movie, adding the ed ending. Here's some more information about tenses in forming questions. When using continuous tenses, the tense which you use in the question should be mirrored in the answer. For example, are you coming to the party? Yes, I am coming to the party. It's the same continuous tense. In the next example, were you coming to the party? Yes, I was coming to the party when you phoned me. We have the continuous tense formation here up above. You can use am, is, are. You use the be verb to start the question and the verb plus ing for the present and was, were plus the verb and the ing for the past. This is in the present tense and this is in the past tense. Let's look at questions with perfect tenses. An easy way to remember how to form these questions is that the tense you use in the question is the tense that you should also have in the answer. For example, in a question with present perfect, the answer will also have present perfect. Have you finished your homework? Have and the past participle. In the answer, yes, I have finished it. Again, we have present perfect in the question and present perfect in the answer. In the next example, it uses past perfect. Had you finished your homework when he came by? The answer, yes, I had finished it when he came by, uses past perfect with had and the verb with the past participle. Don't forget to click on the little I in the upper right hand corner to download all of these slides. There's also a quiz that you can take at the end and let me know in the comments down below. How did you do? It's been a pleasure teaching you today. Once again, I'm Kay with I Speak Spoke Spoken and I'll see you next time. Bye.